Hi everyone, this is the first part of a two-part video. Today I'm going to talk about a camera test of the stomach called gastroscopy or upper gastrointestinal endoscopy. I'm going to at first talk to you and show you what the instrument looks like um, and what it does, how it is put down, how far down does it go into our digestive system, what can be done during the procedure, what pathologies can be picked up during the procedures, what can be done about it. I also tell you about the preparation before the procedure is done for the patient, obviously, um, and what to expect when they come into an endoscopy unit to have the test done and what to expect during the test. Obviously, practice varies from one center to the other and also from one country to the other. So. Uh, what I'm going to tell you about is, is practice in vast majority of endoscopy centers, perhaps not all. As I said, practice varies a little bit. And the costing is about what uh, uh, costing is in the United Kingdom. So let's take one thing at a time. So this is what a gastroscope looks like. It's about a meter long, which is about three foot three inches long. It is the thickness is size of your little finger or index finger. Um, it does not weigh very much. It's made out of fiber optic fibers which are bunched together and carry both light and images from the tip of the gastroscope to a processor which converts, this, converts it into pictures which are seen on a very high definition screen uh, or television screen. The cost of this uh, instrument can easily buy you a very nice car. So it's a very expensive instrument to have and to maintain and to run. So what uh, controls has the endoscopist got uh, on the scope? There are two wheels which control the movement of the tip of the scope up and down and sideways. The main movement of the scope is controlled by the endoscopist with his, his or her wrist by twisting the scope. The wheels can be moved for fine control of the tip to take biopsies and do some surgical procedures, etc. inside. There's a channel through which biopsy forceps and other instruments can be put down to do advanced procedures there is a channel through which air is pumped in and there is a channel through which suction is done and also the same channel also controls the cleaning with water spray in the front of the scope so in this picture you can see the tip of the scope got light coming out of it and that tip is also got movement with the wheels that can be moved up and down sideways on the left, there is a little channel through which uh, instruments and biopsy forceps can be put down to do procedures as necessary. So, uh, I made a simple diagram to explain how far does the endoscope go. So that is the mouth, that is the nose of the patient. The gastroscope can be put through either the mouth and in some centers also through the nose. Obviously, the gastroscope that is pushed down the nose because going through a smaller hole, which is a nostril, is much thinner as compared to the gastroscope that's put through the mouth, although they are similar length almost. So, and the one through the nose can be a bit difficult to put down. Somebody had a broken nose before or uh, the nose is blocked, etc. for whatever reason. So anyway, from the mouth of the nose, it goes to the back of the throat, then into the upper part of the esophagus, which is the food pipe and then comes to the lower part of the esophagus where it meets the stomach and the gastroscope will loop around the stomach through here and then goes into the first part of our small intestine called the duodenum which is the first part of the small intestine. If you're not sure about the anatomy of the gastrointestinal tract then I will leave a link below uh, for my first uh, two videos in which you can see the anatomy of the gastrointestinal tract and make it much easier to understand. And the gastroscope, as I said before, is about a meter long and usually comes to about here, which is the second part of the duodenum. Below it is the third part of the duodenum. However, in most gastroscopy, the procedure will end around this part of the duodenum or the upper gastrointestinal tract. So first and second part of duodenum will be looked at, stomach will be looked at, esophagus or the food pipe will be looked at, the whole test procedure, if it's only being done for diagnosis, which means picking up what is wrong with the patient's symptoms rather than doing any treatment in there or taking any major biopsies or anything, 
will take about three, four minutes to do, sometimes a bit quicker. Some endoscopist practice is taking a wee bit longer because they're obviously a bit more particular about looking at different parts of the stomach and the other part they're looking at. Uh, is there a failure rate with the procedure? Yes, there is a failure rate of the procedure. Not everyone can have an endoscopy. Some patients have a very strong gag reflex. Some patients feel very claustrophobic with the test. They feel very distressed with the test. Although, as I explained before, the tests can be done um, under sedation and numbing the throat with a throat spray as well or both. But still, some of them will find the procedure too unbearable and cannot go through the test. And in my experience, about 5% patients uh, are in that category who cannot uh, easily do the test. Some patients can't swallow the scope because when the scope is put down, patient has to take a swallowing action for the scope to go down. Otherwise, the gullet will not open. There's a sphincter over here which keeps the gullet shut and the camera won't go down until once take a swallow. And some patients have a very poor swallowing mechanism and they can't swallow easily and the camera again can't go down. So what is the endoscopist looking for during the test? So examinations of the gastrointestinal tract by an upper GI endoscopy starts around this area, top of the esophagus or the gullet. Camera goes down. First few inches are always a bit tricky in my experience to look at a few centimeters because the camera from here to here uh, goes very quickly so the endoscopist will have to withdraw the scope and have a look at this area properly or on the way out have a look at this area again. So in the esophagus we talked about all these conditions in my previous video so please have a look if you're not sure about any of these conditions. So we are talking about things like in the esophagus like reflux, esophagitis, hiatus hernia around here any narrowing or scarring of the esophagus, obviously tumors of the esophagus, cancer of the esophagus. Similarly, in the stomach, looking for stomach ulcers, inflammation of the stomach called gastritis or varices of the stomach and the esophagus, which are dilated blood vessels because of diseased liver. Ulcers of the stomach, again, which can be benign ulcers or cancerous ulcers and other benign tumors of the stomach. Now all we, uh, these conditions I spoke about in my previous videos, so please have a look at them. And then we're kind of coming to the duodenum. The most important thing in the duodenum, duodenum is ulcers. They are the commonest thing and also inflammation of the duodenum called duodenitis. So those are the main things endoscopist is looking at. If any procedures are done, like if there is a bleeding ulcer that has to be stopped, these procedures can take much, much longer. They can take 15 minutes, half an hour, even longer. With the advances in endoscopy, many centers are now removing tumors, early tumors, Barrett's esophagus, etc., etc., through gastroscopes. Now, these procedures take a very, very long time, can take hours to do. And obviously, patient who is under sedation or numbing the throat, that is not possible to do. Patient will be too restless, will be too distressed to do. And these procedures are done under gel and anesthetic. Please remember, as I said before, most endoscopy procedures are done under sedation or throat spray or both. Throat spray with numbing the throat or both. But very small number of procedures, especially also procedures done in little children who cannot tolerate the procedure easily, will be done under general anesthetic. Thanks for watching today's video and if you like this video then please do remember to like and subscribe so that you can watch all my future videos. Thanks for watching again.